Wonderful. It's another Monday and we are back again on today's woman. This is COP USA Radio. And you know, we would like you to know the views expressed by the panel are our own personal opinion. It doesn't in any way, shape or form represent the opinion of the entire Church of Pentecost. Today is part of a very exciting week because we are getting ready to launch ourselves into the Father's day, you know, weekend celebration. And as such, we're going to give our husbands and fathers a gift. And you know, as women, we love to talk. We are very good communicators. And we are hoping that even as Father's Day is about to come, the first gift we'll give to our husbands, fathers, boys in the home is how to communicate with women. And so we are talking about human communication. And today I have wonderful women with me. I'm very excited about this topic and I hope you are too. And so we're going to start. We have Mrs. Dora Berime J. Uh, she's in Hawaii right now. And you know, I, I, I was thinking about Hawaii and that has been a place that I would love to be. When I was young and in school, I said I was going to have my honeymoon in Honolulu, Hawaii. It hasn't happened yet but there's nothing to say I can't have a second honeymoon. So, so Mami Dora is married to Reverend uh, uh, Berime J, and they are blessed with three awesome kids, and now Adipa and Oye. Uh, she has a bachelor's in communications from Amherst Uni you know, College, so it's good that she's on board with us on this topic. And she's co-authored four books with her husband, A Game Nobody Wins, The Chemistry of Love, Things We Do for Love, and Who is Taking the Fan Out of the Marriage. And so we um, have a privilege of, uh, you know, today inviting her to the show. And she has, um, you know, uh, what she's doing right now is a skilled trainer for kids with behavioral problems. So First Lady Dora Berry Majay, you are welcome to today's woman. Thank you so much for having me on the program. Wonderful. God bless you for coming. And as always, 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 we also have, you know, so Mommy Henrietta could see here. It's always a pleasure to have her with me. Married to Reverend Benjamin Kusi of Tennessee District. She has three boys and a girl. Jeremiah, Joshua, Jonathan, and Jenna Nicole Kusi. And she has a BBA accounting, has worked in the accounting profession. And now she's a fisher of men, a product of the youth and Benson ministry. So Mommy Henrietta Kusi loves women empowerment issues. Please welcome so Mommy Henrietta Kusi to today's woman. Always, always a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for having me again. God bless you. Amen. God bless you too. All the way from Canada. It's a pleasure. And we want to salute the National Head of Canada because our mama is all coming from Canada and it's a Father's Day weekend. And you know, all the people from Canada. We have Mama Deborah Engman. She goes by Auntie Debbie normally. And she's the wife of Apostle Daniel Engman, area head of North York area in Toronto, Canada. And she has been a missionary to Guyana, South America in the past, uh, educated and guilty. Guilford University College as an early childhood educator and also a herbalist from the Dominion Herbal College as well as she is a pre-horticulturalist, a best mother of three and several children in the kingdom. Mama Debbie Engman, it's a pleasure once again to have you on today's Woman. Thank you very much for having me. Welcome, Mommy. God bless you. And also we have somebody that is not new to today's woman, um, Mama Margaret Ofori. She's been married for over 28 years. So it's good. She's going to tell our daddies how to communicate with women. She's married to Apostle John Ofori. He's the region head for Ohio region. He's also the national secretary for COP USA. Our mommy has three children, professionally a trained teacher, social worker, healthy eating and wellness trainer. And so our mommy, it's a pleasure ever again to have you on today's woman thank you very much mama it's always a pleasure to be with you on this platform god bless you amen god bless you too so on behalf of today's woman we wish all our men a happy father's day in advance our national head apostle Amwako, we salute you happy father's day to all our men we want to just say we are very excited for this season so seriously we are coming to talk about something very important and that is communication humans thrive on communications Humans love to 
to communicate. Communication is part of how we are engraved. And women love to talk. This we are free to generalize. But today we're going to look at how to be efficient, effective communicators and enjoy communication. Mama Margaret, we're going to start with you. So when we are talking about human communication, what it all it is, what is it? What isn't it? Mama Margaret. Mama Margaret, please, you are mute. Thank you. Okay. Yes, mommy. You can. Yes, please. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. okay. We thank the Lord very much for another day, another opportunity to come and also talk with you. Yeah, just like we know, communication is very important. It is it underlines the human relationship. Without communication, life cannot move on. Mm. So it's very important to understand what it is. It is a verbal or non-verbal expression of thoughts. Mm -hmm. Verbal or non-verbal expression of thoughts between two people or more. Mm. Communication is very important. It's essential because without communication, you cannot interact. You cannot understand somebody. You cannot even express your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings. Mm. With communication, there will be no life because everything in this world boils down to communication. Mm. There are so many ways we can communicate. Mm. Verbal, non-verbal. And even in, communication also includes writing, speaking, listening, hearing, making gestures, actions, and a whole ways that we communicate. So the important thing with communication is you have to communicate so that you allow the person or people around you to have an understanding of what you are talking about. Without Without understanding, your communication is meaningless. Mm. So the mm. time we talk, 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 without making no sense. Mm. So the important aspect of every communication in this world is to make sure you are being understood. Mm. And mm. also you have to take the people around you into consideration. Are you speaking positively to them or negatively to them? Okay. Something that we have to look at. So it's not just a matter of just talking, talking, but what are you talking about? Is it making impact positively, negatively? Are you being understood? Are you speaking the right words, the choice of words at the right time? These are very important. And so whatever that you do is very important when you communicate. According to research, the human facial expression has about 250,000 ways that you can express yourself. Mm. So I sit down and look at you and be talking. Without even opening my mouth, I can be talking to you. So there are so many ways we communicate. And I think it's very important for us today to understand the importance of communication, the importance of effective communication. That is what I think our goal should be today. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. I think that you have really, you know, opened up with so much that it's a great way to start the conversation. God bless you. Mama Debbie, we're going to come to you. You know, our mommy was talking about facial expressions. So she's talking about verbal, non-verbal, and how important it is to make sure that there's understanding in what you were communicating. Is that something you want to weigh in as well? Yes. Um, Communication, like our mama Margaret said, is a way of life. Mm. And without communication, you know, life would not move on as it should. Mm. And so all I just want to say is that it's a, it's a way of uh, expressing ourselves from a sender to a receiver. Mm. And it needs to be decoded properly okay. so that there'll be understanding. When it is not decoded properly, that is where sometimes misunderstanding will come in and, and conflict. And, and communication normally is supposed to enhance. Mm. It's supposed to give knowledge. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. sometimes we go into areas where communication degrades and downgrades and, and brings sorrow and all kinds of uh, um, problems, even to the point of somebody saying something to someone 
and then the person will decide, oh, I want to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. So communication is very powerful. Mm -hmm. And if we understand its power and we use it wisely, it will be a benefit for everybody around us. Thank you so much for showing us that communication is very powerful because how can somebody's words initiate suicide, but it just speaks to the volume. God bless you, Mama Debbie. Uh, so Mommy Henrietta, you know, you as well, even as Mama Debbie was saying she said communication is powerful. What do you think about that statement? Um, I think it's 100% true. Um, in every relationship, um, in every um, area in life, communication is essential and it's important, it's vital. Um, our mother said it best for understanding, um, not only that for being able to express yourself, even in work, you have to communicate to even exchange mm -hmm. information. So communication has a, a role to play in almost every area of our lives. Mm -hmm. And it's important for us um, as individuals to understand the benefits of it, like our mother said, and to be able to, to use it effectively. Um, inefficiently. Um, and so it is very important and it's, um, it's something that we have to learn to do and we have to learn how to do it correctly mm -hmm. because um, our mother said it best, sometimes you can communicate things in a way that were not, it was not intended and it's not received properly. Um, our, even in our, our gestures, our facial expressions, um, are so it, you're communicating. So we have to be aware of those things. Sometimes mm -hmm. you can be saying something, but your face is saying co something completely different. Mm -hmm. We have to be aware of those things. We even have to train ourselves even with our facial expressions. So communication is, we do it all the time, even you know throughout the day. And when we are aware of that, then we'll be able to do it um, correctly. God bless you. So Mommy Dora, I could see that you wanted to wait on that, especially when so Mommy Harriet was talking about saying something, there's just that incongruence in the facial expression and the words that are spoken. If you could go ahead and wait on that as well. Um, yes, um, thank you for having me on the program once again. I feel like my mother has said it all. Mm -hmm. to what Mommy Henrietta said, 63% um, of our communication is nonverbal. Mm -hmm something that most people do not realize. Mm -hmm. and that has made us very distinctive from all other species. Mm -hmm. In we have language, we are able to communicate. Animals cannot do that. Mm -hmm. and the majority of the time we forget that our body language speaks volume. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, like uh, so Mami and Rita said, you may be saying something, but your whole facial expression is saying otherwise. That's so, right that we need to understand that, you know, for me, I personally, I like to talk face to face like we're doing, mm -hmm. because we're able to watch all the non-verbals. That's right. And then get into the conversation well. So in, in communicating with other people, we, we need to understand that our non-verbal speaks volumes. So that mm -hmm. is something that uh, we need to bear in mind. Wonderful. God bless you. And I think that since we are in the season of Feathers Day coming up, we want the men, Mama Margaret, we're going to start to minister to the men. You know, it's like, oh, my wife is not saying anything. And we are saying, watch the nonverbals. And there are some men that even some gestures, the women are like, I'm, I'm talking, honey. It's like, you didn't say a word. So Mama Margaret, we're going to talk specifically to husbands who, how they need to watch the clues, the nonverbals, the expressions that women are speaking because we are saying uh so mommy daughter said 63 percent of our communication is nonverbal. so mama margaret how can these men because we are saying communication is never effective until the recipient understands the message so nonverbal clues how can they decipher what has been said yes i think to our husbands or married people communication is number one in every every marriage mm. Every good marriage begins from communication. Without communication, there will be always misunderstanding. The Bible says, He's given us the tongue of the learned. Mm. Isaiah 50, verse 4. So, giving the tongue of the learned means you have to learn how to speak appropriately. Mm. Nobody is born with good communication skills, mm. it is left with you and I to learn how to speak appropriately. That's right. When you're a spouse, you live together for the rest of your life. So what you communicate can destroy the other person or build the other person. And little things can really make a big deal in the marriage. So far as marriage is concerned, mm. so I am entreating all marriage couples that you have to learn 
You have to appeal to the Holy Ghost. You have to ask him to give you what? Give you a seasoned communication skills. So that you know when to talk and how to talk. You mm. see, the needs of women are different from the needs of men. That's right. <laughs> yes. We speak more. We, we are always emotional. Most of the time, women are emotional. But men, they speak facts. So as a man, how <laughs> to speak to your wife? When you go to the Bible, like First Samuel 1, 8, mm -hmm. for our Bible references, we see that Elkanah was talking to Hannah. You see, mm. tell you the whole clue. Hannah was seeking for something that was so dear to her heart. That's yes, right. Heart. And she has been weeping and crying all this time. And to his husband, to the husband, it's like, what is what is children to you? That's right. There, you see, he is also seeking for his own interest. <laughs> for something different. So whenever when it comes to communication between married people, it's always very sensitive. Mm. Be very careful what you are how you are talking to your spouse. You mm. think it doesn't mean anything. But at the end of the day, it can affect him or her. So know your communication skills. As you communicate as a husband or a wife, know what your husband needs and know what your wife also needs so that there will always be a balance. So I believe that Hannah, the child was so dear. She needed a child so badly. Mm. What this man too was saying, am I not better than... <laughs> can I kettle you? Can I feed you? Can I put you at my back? I mean, you see, so really have to learn to understand each other. No patient right. skills for women, and then men also know this. And then when we all bring them together, I think it will make it will make what sense in the marriage. Amen. God bless you. I think that this is a very powerful scripture that mommy you just referenced, and I want to read it. And it speaks to something about communication that we can all read the same thing, and because of how selective our perspective is, we come out with different variations. So the woman is saying something else, and mama saying, "Look, you think you are better than ten cents? Can I put you on my back and I breastfeed you and stuff like that?" It is very interesting, and there other dimensions to you know that same you know scripture so i think now so mommy dora i'm gonna come to you from that first somewhere scripture that mommy you know just referenced what other things can you infer from that scripture even from what uh, elkanah said well, thank you for that question so from what elkanah said first of all i want to say that this is a man who has taken the time mm -hmm. to study his wife okay empathizing you know, from what he said, Hannah didn't say anything. Hannah was crying. Hannah mm. was sad. But he was able to read her nonverbals and figure out that my wife is not all right. There is mm -hmm. something wrong here. What is going on? That's and right. Hannah saying anything, he, he said it all. Am I not better than 10 cents? Mm -hmm. What I say here is that for me, Elkanah, that is a, a great husband. The only <laughs> thing, sometimes, Men think they know what their wives want. Uh -huh. That's not it. The fact that you've been able to read her nonverbal is good. I give you 60%. Uh -huh. 40% is you have to let her express herself. Don't assume that you know what is good for her. Because mm -hmm. he's, he's telling her, am I not better than 10 cents? Mm -hmm. well, I mean, in your, in, your, in your own perspective, you may be, but like mama said, she can't carry you on her back. Uh -huh. You know, I'm <laughs> breastfeed, but I stopped that. I, I guess uh -huh. there we know some men. Hmm, we will pause when we do the late night show. We will talk about that. <laughs> so I, I, I believe that um, here it's good that sometimes we need we shouldn't assume anything. Mm -hmm. We empathize and then open room for people to express how they're feeling. So mm -hmm. I give. I give him a thumbs up for at least mm -hmm. um, acknowledging what was going on in that situation. God bless you. Mama Debbie, we're going to come to you. It's very true that at least he's paying attention to even know that there's something wrong, although he's looking at it from a different perspective, even as Mama Dora said, and also Mama Margaret has stated, Mama Debbie, am I no better than 10 cents? <laughs> <laughs> of course you are you are better than 10 cents but this is what i'm feeling 
Mm -hmm. I wish I had my own, right? That's right. Because right. at the end of the day, you do have some, mm -hmm. and I have none. Mm -hmm. And as a wife, he was supposed to see how she's feeling, and 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 then he's in the house. He knows she's been insulted here and there, being made fun of. Mm -hmm. You know, so for me, I would have thought he would even have tried to silence the other wife to let her know that look, enough is enough. Mm -hmm. You know, but I mean, he's allowing this thing to go in on. She's grieving. And he doesn't seem to understand how she's feeling. And sometimes that's what the problem is. You know, um, uh, the, the other party may seem to understand, but they don't fully understand. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. like we talked about the nonverbals, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh, the nonverbals. So you, you have to pay attention. Sometimes the person may be downcast. Anna maybe have been downcast. Mm -hmm. So you read through what she's feeling, cuddle her, make her feel good, but don't say, am I better than 10? Am I not better than 10 cents? Let mm -hmm. her know she, she, you really care and feel for her. And that's the reason why after that, she went into the uh, temple to pray, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, because she felt <laughs> probably, Happy doesn't understand me, so let me go before God. God mm. really understands. That's right. That is where she went. Yeah. God bless you, Mom. I mean, first Amen. Samuel chapter one, verse eight. Then Elkanah, yeah. you, you know, so it, I'm even going back to verse seven. So it was year by year, the Lord had closed her womb. So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. So we see the emotion, she's communicating something. And then, well, he's trying to help, like we all say. But Elkanah says, her husband said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than 10 cents? Then verse nine, Hannah doesn't say a single word. So Hannah arose after they had finished eating and drinking in shallow, and then she went to the temple of God. So we, we are saying that communication is never effective until the recipient gets the message. So Mami Arietta, what do you see, even as we are trying to help our fathers and our daddies, as far as this coming, that how best to live in that house than to be able to understand what your wife is communicating. Yes, you know, I just want, you know, just to add to what our mothers have said, um, I, I give him some kudos for at least asking because we have to, we have well, to, we have to see that not, there are some women who their husbands don't even ask. They oh. see that they may be sad. They see that they may be going through things, but they don't even ask what's wrong. How was your day? How are you feeling? How is it at work? So at least he asks, but like mm -hmm. we are all saying for him to have answered the question or how uh, have answered her emotions, he, that's mm -hmm. where he, 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 he messed up a little bit. So mm -hmm. I would just encourage our husbands that, you know, it's good for you to ask when you see, um, you need to be able to know your wife. Mm -hmm. And just like as women, we need to be able to know our husbands. We know mm -hmm. um, when they're having good days, we know when they're having bad days. Mm -hmm. Just ask the question, how are you doing today? How are you feeling? And giving mm -hmm. the person the room and the space to respond. That is what promotes effective communication. Mm -hmm. You're not just asking it for you to answer it yourself, but you're giving them the opportunity to also respond so that you can also receive and, and you can also give back. So we, we have an exchange between a sender and a recipient and mm -hmm. it promotes effective communication. That's so right. we see here that he, he tried, but he just, he, he didn't complete his, his, his good attempts. But even for him to ask, I'll give him at least one thumbs up because some husbands, they don't even ask. And that's all, um, that's, that, that is one aspect or one important aspect when it comes to communication, just being able to see how the other person is feeling. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. And you know, as you were talking, it, it brings me back to, I remember sitting in school and, you know, as we were doing the communication pathway and, you know, there's that messenger, but the, the disconnect is the encoding perspective where there is what we classify as noise, things that hinder the recipient from getting the message. And it's mm -hmm. not noise as you know it as in, oh, there are other people talking, but just the selective perspective, selective perception, mm -hmm. the prejudice of the recipient recipient and how they see things and we see this at work here he sees what her issue is and he's oversimplified it but like you were saying for that communication to be effective there should be that atmosphere created for the person who created the message to either 
paraphrase, rephrase, or reaffirm or deny what you are interpreting to be. And the platform creator for the feedback for her to say, honey, yes, this is what I mean. But you know, from what Hannah showed us, it's like, there's no point trying to convince my husband. He's made up his mind. He's not even asking me. So, so mommy, Dory, I'm going to come to you. Even for us to be effective communicators, setting the platform, how should it start? Oh, um, you, you, you did say something about things that the, the things that the hindrances. Mm -hmm. and I just want to comment on that, that to be an effective communicator, you cannot communicate through screaming. Mm -hmm. I, think, mm. I should say, I, I don't know whether it's our culture or whatever it is. We like to scream. Mm -hmm. and so even in raising our children, we scream a lot. <laughs> and I, I remember you know, my, I have a, a younger sister and he's, um, He's still pick, trying to speak um, tree. Mm -hmm. And when you say Esther, speak tree. When you tell her to speak in English, she will speak very normal, very calm. When you say Esther, speak tree, she'll be like, oh, blah, 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 blah. and then she starts screaming. And I'm like, what <laughs> And she's like, you know how you guys talk? <laughs> and I think to be an effective um, communicator, we have to understand that you cannot scream. Mm -hmm. You want to put mm -hmm. your, your point across. Mm -hmm. you communicate in calmness mm -hmm. and that is the problem with us women sometimes because we are emotional sometimes you are so emotional so you're, you're what you're trying to communicate you are not able to make full sense and like mama said communication is meaningless when it does not make sense to the person who is receiving it mm -hmm. so I would say that we need to understand that we should not communicate through screaming yes right we communicate through anger Mm. It will not get anywhere. There should be clarity and direction mm. as to what you want to achieve. Even if you are angry, you should be assert assertive. Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to, uh, you know, scream or 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 or, or say it in an angry way, because then the other person gets very defensive. Mm -hmm. All these uh, little noises in there. Sometimes you have very good intentions. You're trying to communicate something, and before you know it. The other person sees it in a, in a very different way. But when, you, when it's very clear, it can even stop conflict. Mm -hmm. And that was the story that I, um, you know, I heard that I thought was a very, of a father and a son. You know, the son left Ghana some years back mm -hmm. and came here, doing well, and you know, found a woman that he wanted to marry. So okay. before he left, um, they had a, an animal farm. So he calls his dad and, and is telling his dad, oh, you know, things are going well. I found this lady, daddy. Uh, I want you to go find out about her background and mm -hmm. all that. And anytime he's, he tries to say anything, his dad is like, oh, yeah, 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 Bakofi, you know, ah, remember the little goat that um, uh, was here before you left? Man, it is so big now. Oh, and, and remember the cat? So at some point, the, the son said, dada, jaimua samuna. Oh. <laughs> you know, basically saying, Daddy, forget please, about the animals. <laughs> the father got offended uh -huh. because it's basically it, it feels like you are insulting me. Mm -hmm. But son, I'm trying to say, stop talking about the animals. Animals. Stuff. Uh -huh. <laughs> about what I want to say. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess you know they were able to clarify it, and you know, and the father said, "Well, next time, say, Daddy, Jaimuan no asem no." <laughs> I always you know, uh -huh. and, and I, I guess it was it was very clear. So sometimes we 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 have to be very clear mm. in how to communicate to, to people. Mm. Mm. I, I like that example because of if the the father hadn't given room for him to clarify, then he will be grieved and offended when that was not the intention. You know, when you're talking about your daughter, so I have my little girl and sometimes I'll be upstairs, my son is downstairs and then I'll call prophet. And you know, funny enough, one of the days she's upstairs with me and she's like, and you know how I, I didn't even pay attention of my mood. And she, she puts her hands here, it's like prophet. 
And I, I was like, can you imagine? Because that's what mommy does. Because I've called him once and twice and he's not responding. So I'm getting myself geared up to scream. And my little girl just imitated me just like that. And I laughed my head out. But you are absolutely right. Sometimes we feel like we have to emphasize certain things. But you're talking to us about our tone, our indulation, and you know how we communicate. That's very interesting. That is true that we need to watch that. God bless you. Mama Engman, we are looking at that scripture again, and we want to look at when we communicate, you know, the, the stage, the environment, the atmosphere. Was that the right atmosphere for him to address the issue for her? Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, before... I answer that question. I think something came up in what we were talking about to do with the mm -hmm. communication, um, yes, to do with the, the guy and his father. You know, mm -hmm. the father was telling him things when he was telling the father something, the mm -hmm. father wasn't listening to him. That's right. One of the major keys of communication is listening. Mm -hmm. You know, it's both ways. So when I'm talking to you, if it's important to you, you will listen to me. That's right. So when the father was in listening, the father was also giving him information when he was also given information. And that mm -hmm. is what brought the problem. If the father had been patient to listen to him because it was important, then the son, it wouldn't have gotten to where it is. And I think, yeah, when you look at it also with Elkanah, I mean, he saw that his wife was not happy. Actually, like Mama Henrietta said, he did ask. Mm -hmm. And I think it was the right time because when you see that somebody is not happy and you just keep quiet, your spouse is not happy and you just keep quiet as if you don't care, mm -hmm. that would even aggravate things more. Mm -hmm. So he read mm -hmm. the signs and saw that no, something wasn't right. But instead of, you know, maybe, and he assumed that he knew the reason why. Mm -hmm which is also partially true. He did know the reason why, mm -hmm. but he didn't understand the depth of her feeling. Mm -hmm. And so it was a good time for him to have spoken to her. Uh, it was a good time for him to have addressed the issue, but just to open up so that she would vocalize what mm -hmm. she was feeling wasn't what the opportunity he didn't give to her. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe in that area, he should have giving her the opportunity, like, what are you feeling, you know? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then he should have tried to understand. And like we are saying, because he has 10 sons, <laughs> as an <his> example. <laughs> so to him, it wasn't <laughs> such a big deal. Mm -hmm. But if if he had made her to feel like, okay, despite all the, the 10 sons that I have, I mean, you having one would be very precious. Probably it would have eased a bit of the stress as well. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much. Talking about the listening. Yeah. And, you know, when it comes to communication, uh, you know, I remember one of our lecturers, <laughs> and I, like I said, I'm very excited about this topic mm -hmm. because for people, and I know so my Dora has done communication as well. It's it's a class that you sit in there for years doing communication. I remember somebody saying, why do I need to come here for years to talk about communication? We all talk and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. one of our instructors said, you have to listen with your eyes, your your senses. And, you know, he spoke in our local dialect and it was very funny. And I remember that. But you are very right. There's so many people that do not listen. Even as you're speaking, they are quick to answer and they do not answer you appropriately because their minds are not with you. They are listening with their own prejudices. They are listening with their own ideas. So thank you for bringing that to the fore. That was a good story and a good lesson. So Mami Henrietta, we are going to come into that the right timing while the woman is crying and somebody says, well, she hasn't told me what is wrong. And from what woman Debbie said, what do you also think when it comes to communicating even across, you know, the genders? Yes, I think it's important for you to, you know, especially when you see someone is going through a, a situation, your spouse, mm -hmm. um, either, you know, the wife or the husband, it's important for you to not try to um, at least attempt to mm -hmm. see how or the person is doing or how the person is feeling. It at least shows that you're concerned, at least shows that you care. Um, especially, you know, as women, we are naturally, like our mother said, we're emotional beings. So um, 
someone may say we can be moody at times. So, but uh, yet still, you know, we should at least, you know, address the situation or address the concern um, so that the individual can at least have a feeling of, 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 of that, you know, the individual, their spouse is concerned about their well being. Mm -hmm. It's important, um, even with the individual, because then it makes them feel as if, you know, their emotions are being acknowledged or um, their, their worry is being acknowledged. Mm. And um, I think so when it comes to timing, timing is, in very, is very important, even outside of when someone is going through something, even when you have an issue in home and you're addressing the situation, timing is very, very important because mm -hmm. addressing certain issues at the wrong time can create a conflict or an argument. So you have mm -hmm. to, of course, check out the scene, check out the environment, set the mood um, for certain conversations. Um, so I, it's something that both men and women, we have to work towards. Um, mm -hmm. I said in the appropriate mo uh, mood, appropriate time to be able to discuss certain things. Thank you so much. God bless you, the timing. And that takes me to the scripture that, Mama Margaret, I'm going to come to you real quick. I'm going to read it and then we'll zoom into our next, you know, conversation. You go to the book of Genesis. Something has happened over there, but we're talking about the timing that is appropriate. I see it. Should I handle it now? I see it. Should we talk about it now? But I take you to Genesis chapter 3, 8 to 13, NIV. The, this is what some, something has happened. The Bible says, then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Verse 9 says, but the Lord God called to the man, where are you? Ten said, he answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, who told you that you were naked? But mama, I'm looking at something that the Bible said. What was the timing? And he says, have you eaten? But when you go back to the, the thing, and I want us to look at when something has happened, the timing and given the forum for a clear conversation to be had. So one, they had the son of God, but he came in the cool of the day. Mm -hmm. Two, they hid from him. But then God said, have you eaten? Or he said, where are you? So Mama Margaret, mm -hmm. please talk to us about the timing. Something is wrong, but look at the timing for us, please. Yeah, I think timing is also just like our mothers have said, Timing is very, very crucial. Communication. Mm -hmm. When you read Colossians 4, 6, it says, let your speech always be with grace. Mm -hmm. See, and here we see that even the almighty God, he could have jumped there at any time. Mm -hmm. but his child, he came when it was very cool, mm -hmm. peaceful. I guess maybe they finished eating. Mm -hmm. They enjoying relaxing. Mm -hmm. it, jump to somebody, even it doesn't matter what, whether what you are going to say is right, but the timing is very important. Mm -hmm. and then also, you have to also assess the environment and the, whether it's conducive or not conducive. So mm -hmm. God himself took his child, he came there. Well, I believe they were relaxing. They were, hmm, but because of guilty conscience, they themselves knew. <laughs> See? Yeah. <laughs> so once they heard him coming, I believe that was not the first day God visited them, mm -hmm. visiting them almost every day because it's all it's God and human. It's all about relationship. Mm -hmm. God has been visiting them, and those time when they heard him coming, it's like they were guilty mm -hmm. results. And what I have learned from here is, you see, when God came, He said. Where are you? God knew that they were hiding. But he took his time to ask them. He wanted them to come out with their own guilt. So he said, where are you? And then they said, we are hiding. And then he said, have you eaten? What? <laughs> have you eaten what I told you not to eat? Mm -hmm. And then they themselves responded. And then uh, God said, because of what you have done. What I see here is, you see, when someone, when you are communicating, the timing is very important. The actual, the environment is also very important. And then the choice of words are very important. Mm -hmm. If you are rebuking, rebuke with love. Mm 
Mm. Give them time for them to think about what they have done, for them to reflect, for them to come out, for them to speak for themselves, and then they themselves decide whether what they did was right. Or so you don't jump into a conclusion. When you are talking to somebody, allow, be comfortable. Allow the person himself to come out with the answer or whatever that is going on. So I think this is something that we all need to learn. We don't have to jump into a hasty conclusion. And mm. timing and then knowing what to say at the right time, I think it's very important, especially as we uh, husbands and wives, we have to be very careful how we approach things and communicate with each other. Amen. Thank you very much. I'm going to come for more, you know, uh, input, but I need to acknowledge we have so many people that are with us and we're going to acknowledge them. You are with us on today's Women COP USA Radio and us indicator initially every opinion and view expressed is our own personal opinion it's not the whole view of the church of Pentecost, you know worldwide and i have auntie grace ajima she's with us BRWC new york she says good afternoon my family of god good afternoon to you auntie louise henry jackson is always with us she says good afternoon family of god god bless you apostle john ofuri our national secretary is with us he came to support mama margaret and all of us thank you apostle for being with us and as the other Christian Numo is with us, God bless you, sir. And see Angelina is with us, God bless you. And I pause, I'm so excited. Bishop Ken and Nia J, he's a bishop in Action Church. He's my best friend's father and a man that has inspired me even as a young lady, a very great man of God. God bless you, Bishop, for coming here to support. Thank you so much and love to mommy and Christine. I see Mrs. Natasha Graham Mensa is with us. First lady, God bless you for all you do. The man Chris is with us and he says, this is an important topic. Thank you so much, sir. I see Mrs. Corrine Astari. She's in PRWC New York. She says, good afternoon, women of God. Good afternoon to you too. Elder Echo Bunny is with us. Hi, Elder. Rich Love says, good day, family. Blessings, same to you. Dr. Samo Enkibosiako is with us. God bless you. Sister. I see First Lady Rosemary Bajiako, God bless you. Elder Alamband is with us, God bless you. And I think we do have a question. And Auntie Louise Jackson Henry has this question. And we're going to you know, write it down and answer it once I'm done. She says, what about communicating with someone and they do not listen to your side of the story, but they just want to put their side out? You know, it comes from the example that First Lady Dora gave us. And I see Reverend Benjamin Kosi is with us. God bless you, man of God. My dear Nubian queen, Dickness Bernice Baju is with us. God bless you. I see Reverend Isaac Amayao. God bless you, man of God. And First Lady Cynthia Porterfield is with us. She says, mom, that's so true. No one is born with good communication. Uh, we should be willing to learn. Thank you. And I see Auntie Nelly. She's in PRW. She says, communication is important indeed. God bless you. And also we have uh, Dignes Hager, I could share your voice with us and happy belated birthday to you. I see Reverend Vincent Afedi, God bless you, man of God, and greetings to First Lady Priscilla. And also we have Nana Klomovi, she's with us, God bless you. Forgive me if I don't do your last name right. And she says, communication is key. And also Nana Ekia Chompawa is with us, God bless you. Uh, uh, man of God, Fidelis Graham Mensa is with us. God bless you. Big sister, Mrs. Benedict Bookman J is with us. God bless you. And, you know, we're going to continue the discussion and come back also to acknowledge the people that are with us. But I see uh, the man of God, Reverend Michael Anansi, he's with us and he says, timing is very necessary. James 1.20 says, for the wrath of God does not produce the righteousness of God. God bless you. And Mama Mary Kusi is with us. Our mama came to support First Lady Henrietta Kusi. That's the mother-in-law. But Mommy, we love you so much. I see also Elder Samson Alote is with us. And he and First Lady Dora Berryman's husband, they do the pulpit discussion. So salute, salute. 
my own professor, Dr. Professor Professor, the titles are numerous. Kwame Nketia is here. Thank you, sir. And all of you are here. We are so happy to have you. Emily Aben, God bless you, First Lady. And Dr. Olivia Usubwahin is with us. God bless you so much. Love to your family. I see my schoolmate, Florence Zanel. God bless you for joining us. And also, our dear sister, Hawa Abdullah, all the way from Kumase. She's here. God bless you for being with us. This is the COP USA. You are with us on today's woman. I see my great Ekuma, my sister in law, Mrs. Bernice Asel. God bless you. Love you dearly. Love to the whole family. Dignas Atafeni is with us. All of you who are with us, thank God for your lives and we'll come back to you again. And we're going to continue with the discussion. Uh, mommy, let's look at, and I'm going to come to you first, lady. You know, um, you know what the scripture was saying, but the Lord God called to the man, where are you? God knew already. So we're going to talk about even talking to husbands, talking to fathers, talking to people in general. When something is wrong, how should be your approach? How should be your approach if you want to be a good and effective communicator? First Lady Dora. Okay, thank you. Um, so first of all, I, I believe I wanted to go back to that scripture. Mm -hmm. That is just merciful. Because if, mm -hmm. if you see that scripture when he said, where are you? Adam did not even answer the question. It would, it would have just been a simple, oh, God, I'm here. Mm -hmm. But he went on talking and talking and saying so many things. You know, I'm naked, I'm hiding. Where <laughs> are you? I'm, I'm here. <laughs> you know, and then, so... It goes back to listening again. Mm -hmm. uh, saying God knew and all that, but he still was expecting them, uh, expecting him to communicate. So I believe that there are times that um, our spouses, our husbands may know what is going on. Mm -hmm. But in other not to assume, they expect, they, they, they expect us to, um, to express ourselves. Mm -hmm. So what I would say is that sometimes, you know, you don't, don't just think that because the person knows you, mm. uh, can read you, mm -hmm. you know, able to, uh, they should be able to um, just say whatever is going through your mind. Mm. They may have a clue, but the way you would want to express yourself, they may not say it like that. So um, no matter how the situation is, I believe that um, you can, even when things are tense, watch out for the timing, you know, mm. when things are calm, don't, don't uh, express yourself in anger, don't do it in the heat of the moment. You may end up even saying things that you will regret. You know, you may be right, but at the end of the day, you will end up going to be the one apologizing because of the way you went about it. So we should learn to be quiet sometimes. And then when the atmosphere is good, you know, then you bring it up in a very calm way. And uh, if uh, as a spouse or whoever you are dealing with, when a person approaches you with an issue like that, that is not the time to get defensive. I think sometimes people get defensive because of how um, the, the, the whole thing is presented. Mm. When, when you come out with such force, yes, no right. sit down quietly and then let you, you know, tramp over them. They're going to get yes. defensive. So mm -hmm. is it a matter of, you know, what you said, um, if I'm to put myself in your shoes, I don't think that maybe you try to be mean or whatever, but what you said really hurt my feelings. Mm -hmm. And I don't want you to, uh, to hear me out that next time, you know, don't talk to me like that. Or next time in public, if you want to correct me, maybe do it a certain way. So I'm hurt and I want to let you know that. And I think that as a man, as a woman or whatever, if somebody approaches you with that, um, don't get defensive. Learn to listen and, and take it in. That is your perspective. You may be coming from a very good place, but you have to understand that that is how they heard it. You know, that is their truth. So even though you meant well, that is how they heard it. So you mm -hmm. should be willing to, to, to hear people out. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. And um, I see other people, and there's a question that I'm going to bring. Oh, I see Dickness Doreen Crab, she's here. Auntie Maria McKay is also with us. And Auntie Maria McKay says, good day, everybody. And the man, Chris, he does legal matters. So he says, what is the wife's role? in making sure her husband clearly understands 
what she is communicating. So, and I'm going to tie that also. I see my dearest husband has something he also said, and I'm going to tie that and we're going to answer. He said, interested in the nonverbal type, because women have so many of them that I have lost track. Women of God, please give us some examples so that we can learn. So, yes, they want to learn, mommy. We're going to tell them, Mama Debbie and Mama Margaret and so Mommy Henrietta, whoever wants to take that question, how should we help them? catch the nonverbal clues that we are giving them. And he says that, how can you also help your husband to understand what you're saying? Okay, let me, okay. You see, human beings, just like I said earlier, we are all different, we are all different. Mm -hmm. So to understand your spouse, you really have to study the person very well. Mm -hmm. Study and know the person. For example, if you've been married for five years, six years, I think you should be, you should know your spouse very well at those times. Mm. And then know the temperament of the person too. Mm -hmm. You have different temperaments. Some naturally are cool. Some are quiet. Some are very talkative. Some are loud. Some whatever. And then where you are, where you are born or your environment can also affect your communication skills. So as couples, I think you have to be intentional to study your wife, your husband, to know who that person is, how to talk, when to talk, and how to address. You see, for example, if you are with a woman who is always noisy, talking, 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 you know, that's how my wife is. And then all of a sudden, she, she, she's cold, she's quiet. When you ask her a question, all she does is to shake her head, or maybe when she sleeps, she turns the east side, you are also, then you know that what? This is not right with my wife. Because I know that this is not how my wife acts. Mm -hmm. Should be sensitive. And maybe just take the initiative to go and find out or ask. If you are not sure, I'll just ask you to go on your knees and pray. Mm -hmm. and to give you the solution. Mm -hmm. yeah. But don't take things for granted and take that, okay, that's how she is or that's how he is. Try to come in, find out what is going on. If he's also that quiet person, and then all of a sudden she starts to yell and be screaming and be doing all kinds of things, she leaves the house not even telling you where she's going, then no, there is something wrong. Mm -hmm. I have really observed with my husband here, Apostle Is. As soon as he leaves the house, every five minutes, ten, wherever, as soon as he gets, he calls, he lets me know I'm here. Mm -hmm. So when I don't hear him for some time, then I begin to, what's going on? That's right. What is he doing? Then either I have to call to find out and check what is going on, or because I know that once he gets to where he's going, he will pick the phone and call me. Oh, how sweet. Yes, when he's come, getting ready to come home, he'll pick the phone. Even if it's 30 minutes away from home, he will let me know I'm 30 minutes away from home. So mm. when you hear all these things, I don't take it for granted. I know what's going on. You can't know him of all people you call. And then I also chip in and then I call back. So you really have to study each other and know what goes on and what doesn't go. Don't take things for granted. God bless you so much. And I think that's very great that throughout the day, uh, we give kudos to Apostle for that. He's making sure he's keeping the communication lifeline going. And this is something that's very great, you know, for our men to learn. So we thank God for that clear example. Uh, Mama Debbie and uh, Safami Henrietta, if there's something you want to weigh in as well. Okay. okay. Thanks, Mama Margaret. Uh, the, the information he gave is very, very, yeah, good. Um, Proverbs chapter 15, I think it's one of our, uh, Proverbs 15, very, verse one. It's a soft answer, turns away wrath, mm -hmm. but a harsh word stirs up anger. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, like we're saying, if you get to know who your husband is or your wife is, mm -hmm. um, based on their mood, if something has come which could have stirred up anger, mm. a soft answer will be able to bring it down. Mm. I believe, you know, a lot of um, couples, normally the nonverbals, mm -hmm. should be in effect quite a bit in the marriages. If it is, sometimes even if something happens and one person is offended, a little touch here, a little pat here, mm. a little hug here, That's you know, right. a little 
is there, you know, all those things kind of help to, you know, uh, liven things up, you know, and, and, and it does make a, a, a huge difference, you know, maybe uh, sitting beside your, your, your husband in uh, different places when they are taking a shower, things like that, you know, to show that you, you are paying attention to each other. And when you do, even if something that could have brought some annoyance, mm -hmm. when those things are in place, those nonverbal way of communication, it will honestly temper down the storms and it normally brings a lot of peace in the environment. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mama Debbie, you know, for talking to us about, I, I see it as, you know, being very romantic and, you know, you know, bringing in touch. And so want to speak to people that do not communicate by touch, that, you know, it's something that you can graduate into because it also, human beings, we thrive on touch, you know, social contact. And from what you're saying, sometimes we don't even just have to say everything. Some clues, especially by, uh, you know, I was looking at what the BB you see, you know, um, they, they put on, uh, they were having this very interesting conversation. So when it comes to conversation, uh, women are really more likely to be big talkers than men. And for them, the statistics was, um, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? Women average at 20,000 words a day and men are 7,000 words a day. So we know that women are able to talk, but sometimes we just don't want to use the words. Sometimes we just want to show. So we need our men to shine their eyes. As somebody will say, watch the language. You know, certain things that if she starts to do, certain things if she starts to wear, certain things if she starts to set up is speaking volumes. So as we are saying, the nonverbal clues speak a lot. And so God bless you for that. So let me hear me at it. Yes, I just wanted to add two things to um, what our mothers were saying. Um, our mom was saying about temperaments and us needing to know each other's temperament. And, mm -hmm. you know, the sad reality is that there are some people who they've been married for years, but they still don't know mm -hmm. their spouse's temperaments. They haven't made it a part of their uh, marital journey to know each other's temperament. So it, it requires you to actually have to have a sit down mm -hmm. and actually have a form of communication and ask each other, what should I know? Like when you do certain things, what does that tell me? You mm -hmm. know, so you have to make an effort on your part to get to know the individual, but it's never too late. Of course, you can always sit down and have this conversation. Another thing that I also wanted um, to touch on when it comes to um, your spouse, is sometimes to be honest, the enemy uses um, communication to also cause problems in marriages. There are mm -hmm. some times that you can be saying something to your spouse and it's like you're speaking, you, you see that you're speaking clearly, but the person is receiving it like as if you're speaking a whole different language. Mm -hmm. And so it's not received well. And then even when the person is telling you what they heard, it's like, well, that's not what I said. So mm -hmm. it becomes a back and forth. And it's, the enemy uses that as a way to cause confusion in the midst of marriages. So when a, as a wife, when you see those things, even as a husband, when you see those things, it's important for you to spend time in prayer. And you're praying that God, allow my husband to understand me. Allow me to, when I speak to my husband or when my husband is speaking to me, allow there to be understanding there. It requires us to pray about certain things, some things, some things that you know we have we 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 um we go through in life people will ask oh do you have to pray about that too yes yeah. you have to pray about everything <laughs> like even communicating <laughs> with your husband like allow what i'm saying to you know for him to understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. allow what he's saying to me open my ears so that i can get a clear understanding of it it requires you to pray so it's important for us to to know that even though we are talking about communication, we're trying to build effective communication. The enemy can also use it to cause conflict in your relationship. So you also have to spend time to pray. You have to be aware of that so that you can be uh, conscious of that even in your in the communication that you're having with your spouse. God bless you. Uh, First Lady Dora, I'm going to come to you in Genesis chapter 11, and we're going to talk about the Tao Bible, just from where First Lady Henrietta started. I'm going to acknowledge our people, and she's like, we have to speak a certain language, because at some point, you may be speaking all right, but there's a mis- connect or disconnect or a misunderstanding. We're going to look at what happened in, uh, you know, Genesis 11 in linking it with the Tower of Bible episode and learn a few things from there. But I want to acknowledge that we have Reverend Hayford Jumpo. Uh, God bless you, man of God, for being with us and love to 
first lady Roslyn. And we have our mama, Margaret Asemna. Mommy is with us. God bless you, mommy, for being here. And I love to Apostle Asemna. And my own daddy, Apostle Samson of Fourier, I'm always, always supporting us. Daddy, we salute you and love to Mama Melissa. And Auntie Louise Jackson says that goes for the men too. Absolutely. And my school senior, Dickness Nanatha, she, she says, my chairwoman too cute, referring to um you know, miracle. And I see Auntie Juliana, um, for him, uh, she's here. She says she's watching from Springtis Road, Accra. Thank you so much for making the time to be with us. We appreciate that. And uh, Rachel Love says communication, we, it's very critical. I'm enjoying the discussion. I think I should consider a master's program in communication. You should. It's a lovely class, if you ask me. And then uh, the mayor and Chris says the best communicators are always great listeners. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. And our mama Monica also says, good afternoon, family. Good afternoon to you, to mommy. And we have Patricia Love. And she says, we need to listen, to understand, then to reply. Very important in communication. You were so right. And I have First Lady Angela Amuzu is here with us. And she says, men are not mind readers. Sometimes we want them to just know how or what we are feeling. And I think we will, we will speak into that as well. Thank you, First Lady, for that observation. That's very true. And Auntie Theresa Asiedu is with us. God bless you. Uh, uh, she's a recent bride. God bless you and God bless your marriage. And I, uh, Senior Nana Arthur says, we used to be hearing, but we don't listen. I believe there's a difference. So the hearing and the listening is very true. And she said, listening is great and response and respond in a nice way. That's Louise Jackson. Dickness Nanoti is here. Love to Elder Richard O.T. in Durham. God bless you. And First Lady Eunice Jima is with us. God bless you, First Lady. And love to uh, Reverend Jehu Jima. And also we have several um, comments, but um, Auntie Doreen, she says, communication is part of emotional intimacy, which is very important in a marriage. It is very high on our priority list. Kron Kron Meradi, she is a district women's leader in Oklahoma City. And you are very right. I wanna table that emotional intimacy and I'll come back to it because it's something that I think I, I like that idea. And we also have um, Queenie Stephylis, and she says, timing, environment, and choice of words are important in communicating. Very true, very, very true. And first, um, I see also that, thanks so much, I'm hearing a lot, timing in communication, God bless you. And my own dearest Esther Jeffrey, Dignus Esther Jeffrey of Dallas, she's here. And she says, good day, my dear family. Good day, love, love to everybody. And also several comments. Priscilla Wilson, Auntie in PRWC is with us. Elder Oliver Osman is with us as well. And God bless you all who are with us. Auntie Mavis Asante says, good communication brings peace at home. So yes, Auntie Maud Mensa Bruns is here. God bless you all. Elder Joseph Jeffrey is here. And thank you all who are with us. We acknowledge you as we go along. But you know, we're gonna come back to that scripture. So. First Lady Dara, if you can look at the scripture for me. So if you go to the um, Genesis chapter 11, the Bible says, now the whole earth, I'm looking at it from verse one, New King James Version of the Bible. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, so we see them speaking to each other, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had bricks for stone and they asked for mortar. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. Verse five is where I'm going to pause and then you come in. It says, but the Lord came down to see the city and the tower of which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, indeed, the people are one and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. So come, let us go down and there confuse their language. First Lady Dora, what do you see happening here? So what I see happening here is uh, a group of people that are united. Hmm. 
the way they communicate. Mm. So with that said, it means that communication fosters unity and trust. Because mm -hmm. you can see that because they spoke one language, because they were they were um, united, they had a common goal. They could do things um, together. And so what this tells us is that if we are one, it's reflective in the mm -hmm. way we communicate to each other. Mm -hmm. And I know we talked about this on Anias and Safira, even though you know what they did was wrong, um, they were one in, in the way they communicated. Mm. And so in building the tower as, as, a, as a family, we are a team in mm. building. And if, if, we, if we communicate effectively, it will foster that unity in the family mm. so that our kids cannot even play us, you know, because sometimes you know how they play us. <laughs> You say one thing and then the other spouse says another. Mm -hmm. But if we know that we are in this together, we are building together, we have a common goal. Mm -hmm. And we set this forth. You know, you, you, you understand that I let you talk, I hear you out, you know, I trust you because I know that uh, you, you do hear me out as well. And it's for a common um, purpose, it's for a common goal. Mm -hmm. We'll be united in everything we do. So this, this is what I see happening here, that there's a group of people that even God had to come in and say, and say I need to change their language in order to bring division. Mm. So when we speak one language, when we, are, when we are united in the way we communicate, we are able to build very, very strong bonds and it builds unity as well. Thank you so much. Strong bonds and unity. Mama Margaret, if you want to weigh in, God bless you so much. First Lady Dory, very much, Jay. Yeah, I think what our mother said is very absolutely right. Mm. But I also want to hum up here about the fact that a human communication, every communication brings what there is. Uh, every human communication is about relationship. Mm. You see, when the relationship, when you are together, together, we stand divided, we, we, we are defeated. Mm. What she said is very right. When we are one, when we are together, it brings about a very healthy relationship. Mm. That's like our mother was saying, and that is the reason why when you're a Christian couple, you really have to fight for your life, your marriage. You pray about everything because the devil knows what you can do when you are united, when you are white, when you are one, when there is a good relationship between couples, children, the home is at peace, everything is going on. You can do mighty and greater things for the Lord. So this is something that God is also telling us. Even if evil people are willing to come together mm -hmm. and united to do the bad things, how mm -hmm. people, when believers, husbands, families come together and they are united, you can see how much we can stand very strong for the Lord. Mm -hmm. So how God wants us to live our lives, build our relationship, come together, understand each other, Know when and how to talk. Pray about the words you use. The mm -hmm. words are very important. Your communication skills can destroy, it can build. So I want to entreat married couples, especially if you want to go the Christian way, the godly way, you don't have to joke about your marriage life. Mm -hmm. into prayers, pray, ask the Lord to help you. Come together, when you stand as a family, because right now we see many homes are falling apart mm -hmm. and are wayward. What is going on? Just because there is no what relationship, there is no unity. So I want to encourage our hearers. Unity relationship is very important. So we have to try to build our relationship very well. Amen. God bless you so much. And you know, we, so First Lady Dora also had mentioned even the children. So Mama Debbie, I'm going to come to you in addition to what has been said, even how should we as parents communicate with our kids? And even as there are young people also here, vice versa, let's look at that as well. Because like she said, a house that is divided against themselves, then you have the kids and I have a son. Sometimes you go to mommy, you go to daddy. So Mama Debbie, speak to us, even as a child, you know, educator, from what you see. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, normally, one thing I've known is that before the children even come into the, the family, mm -hmm. um, the husband and wife needs to be people who communicate a lot. Mm 
Mm -hmm. They sit down, they discuss things that are going to be important to them, how they want to see the, the family, how they want to see the home. So before the children come, they've made up a few ground lane rules mm -hmm. so that it will help. Like one of, one of the rules we had was the fact that if I'm disciplining the children and my husband doesn't agree with me, he shouldn't say it in front of the children. Mm -hmm. Uh, you should wait when we go inside. He'll let me know. Maybe you're a little too harsh. So you go in and you go and correct. Mm -hmm. He will not correct it. And then if there is something else to that, the children want something, they come and ask me. He will say, have you asked your mom? What did she say? Mm -hmm. So because of that, it allows us to be one on the direction we want things to go. Because if not, they'll try to weave in here and there. And then one area I also find, and I tell everybody, even including people, uh, the children we have in the church, respect is very important. Mm. I respect the young ones. They are little people, special. Mm. You know, uh, Jesus said, let the children come to me. Mm -hmm. So we got, to, we got to show some respect to them. You know, those little ones will grow up to be the big ones. Mm. And if when they were little, we, we, we ignore them and we don't treat them right. We don't respect their needs and their cares and their concerns. When they become teenagers, do we expect them to speak to us? No, you know, but when they are young and they have an issue or even what I, I, I would normally do is go and lie on their beds. So I have one, one of them with me here and I'll go and lie on his bed. I said, what's happening? So, you know, who is your friend? Who is this? Who is this? And sometimes they wouldn't want to talk, but then I'll bring issues. And so I have learned to build a relationship with him, considering that we were in South America for six years mm -hmm. and none of them was with us. And, and I was one of those people who used to be, hey, hey, you know, what are you doing? The world? And then God told me, he said, no, you know, just talk on the, don't talk too much on the non-essentials. Because mm -hmm. a lot of the times that's what we do. Mm -hmm. The non-essentials, we talk about it. So when the real essentials come, they blocked us. So when you are talking, they would not listen. Mm -hmm. So let us be sensitive to them. And when we do, we respect them. We show love and care. And we let them know they are part of the family. There are issues, any concerns they have, what bothers them, we really care about it. When you do that, honestly, it will make a big difference in the home. And a lot of conflicts and stuff will not be found. We told our children right from the beginning that hands off, hands off policy. Mm -hmm. So in hands of policy, no one is supposed to lift their hand up against each other. Mm -hmm. So even for husband and I, it's hands off. We don't, so what they see practically is how they have lived up till now. And I think if we do that, we realize that each and every one of us is an important factor of the family. It will allow the family, even in conflicts, for there to be understanding so that we can move forward smoothly. God bless you so much for that. Talking to us about the respect for the little people. And you know, as Christian families, it's very easy for us to do. Because if we have family devotions and you let them participate, you bring out the scripture. And, you know, I have my little boy. We ask him, so from this scripture, what, what do you see? And it's so interesting. Sometimes his dad will tell him that he's ministering. And, you know, when his daddy is ministering, he comes to his office. Nobody disturbs him. And I want to ask him to do something. He says, Mommy, I'm waiting on the Lord for my message. I'm like, really? Like, <laughs> what message, you know? But it's so interesting that the same respect that we accord to daddy is the same respect that we need to accord to them. And sometimes, yes, the opinions may not be what we like, but we can start from our devotionals, even showing respect to their views. And even sometimes when you go out to eat, you can let them, you know, order, you know, even for the, the whole family. Oh, so we need to eat pizza. What do you think we should get? And these little, little things that we do communicate to the kids that we have respect for them. And it's very great. So God bless you for letting us know that they are little people and they're going to grow to be the adults. God bless you. First Lady Henrietta Christie, if there's something you want to add to it, even as we look at the productivity, because I like that scripture very much in Hebrews, um, in Genesis chapter 11 that we're looking at, because the King James version of the verse five said the people is one. And that scripture, you know, um, we've always used it to say, look, where grammar is allowed to be wrong is that it's no longer two people, but it's one, is one. The people is one. 
Talk to us about productivity. Two are better than one. And God is linking communication to our productivity. If you even you go back to that scripture again to look at it. Yes. Well, you, well, you know, when we talk about communication, like we said, it when you communicate effectively, you bring it creates a, a team. You become one in the one group or one individual working together for the same common goal. Mm -hmm. And so this is why it's important for us to be able to improve when it comes to our communication because it helps us produce well. It helps us work together as one. And we see that here in a scripture that we read. They were working together with one common goal one common um, desire, and they did it effectively. And this is the power of communication and how effective communication can have a positive impact, even in our households. Um, our mother was saying about even with our young ones, opening that healthy room of communication. Uh, when our children are young, we have to start it very young so that when they get older, when things are troubling them, they know that there's a path in which they can go to to communicate their feelings and their emotions with their parents. So it's important for us to create this healthy um, form or this healthy path of communication in our households. At the same time, one thing, even from the scripture that we, we, we read earlier in Genesis and something that our mother said, the choice of words in which we use, it's so important and so vital. When you're speaking, you know, we, even when you're speaking about a husband and a wife, the way and the words in which you may choose to use when speaking to your child should not be the same words and tone in which you use to speak to your spouse. There should be a difference. Even in the example when we were reading scripture, when God was speaking to the Adam and Eve in the in the garden, he he didn't, you know, he he called out to them, he asked them where they were. He, you know, he gave them the opportunity. And it's no different for us, even as uh, parents, when we're speaking to our children, we give them the opportunity to express themselves. Mm -hmm. There are so many children who are sheltered because it's like their parents have expressed them their emotions for them. And that's not how they're feeling. So they don't even make the attempt. So we have to be able to create a healthy form of communication to be able to build a happy, healthy family unit, a, health, a healthy home. And by so doing, it increases or improves productivity in the family. God bless you so much. Taking us back to Genesis chapter three. And there's something that you said that God knew what he was going to do to them. What, what they had then had grave consequences, but he, he still would give them the platform to dialogue with him. He would still, when you continue to read that scripture, the Bible says that he even kicked them out and he made sure that uh, there was no pathway for them to come back. But look at the respect, you know, treating them as equals, giving them the opportunity to even explain why, even though he told them not to do it, they did it. So it speaks gravely to all of us that it's not even when things are right that we need to express respect, but even when things are wrong, you have talked to us about the choice of words. It's very because I'm looking at the cool of the day in Genesis 3. I'm looking at the tone. Where are you? God is all knowing. He could just fish them out, but he's just giving them that platform to resurface for him to have. And he said, did you guys eat what I told you not to eat? I'm looking at the respectful tone. I would have kicked you out. Most of us would have done that, but God is showing us that there's a power in even what we choose to communicate. And that is what Genesis 11 is showing us. As couples, I think all all of us want to be successful and God is saying if you want to be successful the answer is in verse 6 of Genesis chapter 11 it says and the Lord said indeed the people are one and they all have one language and this is what they begin to do nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them and you know first Lady Dora I'm going to come back to something you said even about Ananias and Sapphira even as we use that story to speak of doing evil yet they, they were in agreement. And so when they were, you know, suffering the consequences, they suffer it all together. It's not a good thing, but we are looking at the agreement. She didn't betray him. And, and, and you know, it's a very powerful thing. I want to acknowledge some other people. And I want us to look unto, at the protest that is happening around us. So we are talking about communication. We are saying we are using gestures and stuff. As Christians, if we want to communicate, what should be our tone? Even as we've talked about tone in the protest, what should be our posture? 
What should be our tone? What should we seek to communicate? So let me acknowledge these people and we'll come back to you, Mama Margaret, to start that dialogue for us, please. So I see that Mama Helen Bruni says, always a blessing to listen to you, women of God. God richly bless you. Thank you so much, Mama Helen. God bless you too. And all the way from Ghana, we need drums. I think I'm going to start bringing drums on today's woman. Some people need the drums. I am drumming for a mama patient also, national head's wife of Canada, and our former national head's wife of the U.S., our own mother. And our mommy patient also says, I'm really enjoying this program. Very important. And she says, God bless you, ladies. God bless you, mama patients. And mama patient is my contact person for First Lady. Um, Debbie Engman. So, Mama Patience, it's a great honor to have you come join us. God bless you so much, and I love to apostle as well. And my dear Deaconess Esther Jeffy says so much wisdom, Mama Debbie Nyamin Shro. Nyamin Shro, too, dear. I see Auntie Mary Asibi Amwakis with us. Kanchian. I'm, I'm greeting her in my local dialect. And I see also. Mommy Vivian and Jay is here. God bless you. And all of you who are with us, God bless you so much. And this is what Elder Alain Benz, man of God, he says, if he's talking to us about decoding the message, he says, if they keep giving us singlets and socks on Father's Day and we are not saying anything, it doesn't mean we like them. Read the signs. <laughs> <laughs> so so I think that this Father's Day, they say no socks, no singlets. They want something. <laughs> we hear you. We got you coming. Thank you, sir. But that was very interesting. Yes, Mama Margaret. Yeah. So can you repeat the question? What was it? The, the, the question that uh, we're talking about our tone, our posture, even yes. as Christians, even as we're trying to communicate in this protest that is ongoing everywhere. How should we as Christians communicate what we are saying? Okay. Once again, we'll go back to what the Bible says. The Bible says we are in this world, but we are not of this world. Mm. See, as believers, we do everything based on the word of God. We don't just go out there doing what because everybody's doing it. But what does the Bible say? Do you want God to be part of what you are doing or you want to exclude him in what, in what you are doing? So if the Bible says we are in this world, but we are not of the world, mm. we have to do it in a positive way. What mm. that we are doing should be done in a very positive way. We don't go out there to do things in the negative way. What is going out is not acceptable. It is not right. It is not good. But in my opinion, you see, I believe that when we go on our knees, mm. something will be done better than we going out there, shouting, screaming, yelling, and doing all kinds of things. Mm. Look what happened recently. People have lost their lives because mm. what was going on. This elderly man was pushed down. His car was open is dead. Mm. A young guy was, was killed. And a whole lot of things. He said, this, uh, this thing that is going out, this doesn't, they didn't start yesterday. This protest and all this what police brutality started years and years and years and years ago. Mm. So, I mean, it will not take one day or two days or one week to, to eradicate this issue. Mm. I believe that when we begin to tackle those from the spiritual point of view, I believe it will work much better. Mm -hmm. After all, I've been saying some of us, our parents, have been in the U.S. for over 40 years. Mm -hmm. But the Lord has protected them, has kept them. What was the approach? They knew how to interact in the community. Mm -hmm. They knew how to go about things. They knew how to talk. And they knew how to do things. And the Lord has been so gracious to them, has protected them up to those time. My own father and mother-in-law, they just recently moved to Ghana. They've been in the U.S. for about 35 years and more. Mm. Great. They have all their children here, and nothing has happened to them. Why? Mm. Because they were able to take care of themselves and by the grace of God. So I believe that we also need to take care of ourselves in a very positive way. We need to pray more. We really need to dedicate our lives more to Christ.
Because at the end of the day, it is the Lord who is able to take care of us. It mm. is how much we go out there protesting, it is okay to do it. But I believe that it is the Lord who is able to protect us. You see, let me tell you, a policeman, if your life is soaked in the word of God and you are really for the Lord, a policeman who will rather come and molest you will come and really help you. Yeah. Experience before. When you are just walking and a policeman will just come to you, how can I help you? What can I do for you? You see, mm. because I believe that the God that we are serving is everywhere. Yeah. Even if we want to be part of what is going on, we have to be very careful what we do out there. Mm. Let God be our God and let us put our trust and confidence in him. And I believe that none of our children, none of our seed will be touched, will be molested in America. So mm. this land belongs to God. He will provide, he will take care of us. Amen. Amen. God bless you, mommy. And so, like you said, everybody has the right to protest, but we are children of God. And what we do should reflect God. And you said in prayer, we will be secure. God bless you. Even as we are about to start to wrap up, we want to, you know, look at this question. And as we talk about romantic communication and talk about emotional intimacy, and I want to salute my own brother-in-law, man of God, Reverend Silas, uh, miracle ample for he's all the way in Fiji man of God God bless you for taking the time to be here with us God bless you so much we love you dearly and you know we're going to go back to what um, Dickness Doreen Crab had mentioned about emotional intimacy it's something that's very in, in important because some couples are not in sync emotionally and we want to talk about how can we communicate to each other emotionally as couples and also equal be romantic as well. Mama Margaret, as uh, I take from um, First Lady Henrietta Pussy, being a young person, if you could speak to us, sometimes it looks like it's, it's romance for only the young people. Maybe not, but talk to us from a young person. I'll come to First Lady Dora and then we'll, we'll listen to our mothers as well. So I like the balance from the young to the old. If you could talk to us about as couples, how can we communicate romantically in the home, especially Father's Day is coming up. You know, we, the men this time, Elder Alabama says they don't want the socks, they don't want the singlet. So how can we touch them, you know, romantically and emotionally? In um, well, for me, I think that, you know, when it comes to um, nonverbal communication romantically, we, you know, showing affection to each other is a very good form mm -hmm. of um, communication emotionally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, holding hands, just go, you know, even when you walk by, you know, rubbing, your husband's head or coming mm -hmm. by and rubbing your wife's shoulders. I mean, those things you don't necessarily have to say much, but it's kind of you showing, you know, the, 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 the lovey side to you a little bit, you know, sometimes you can be sitting there and, you know, honestly, I'm not, uh, I don't believe in, um, you know, overdoing it when it comes to affection, but I strongly believe that in a household that if your children are there and they see you holding each other's hands, to me, it's healthy. They're mm -hmm. showing that it's, you know, mommy and daddy are, oh, mommy and daddy, are, look at mommy and daddy, look at mommy and daddy. It's a, it's a good form of communication. When they see that, you know, you're sitting there and you have, um, and you have um, your arm around your, your spouse or your husband, it's a good form of communication. And I have this one, you know, testimony that I went, or, or one experience that I had, and mm -hmm. um, it was about my father-in-law. He came to visit me, Lord rest his soul. And um, they came to visit him and my, my mother-in-law and um, uh, uh, my mother-in-law wasn't feeling well. And I was in the kitchen and they were on the table on the, in the chair. And he just had, he just came, he put his arm around her. And I just thought that was just the sweetest thing possible because she wasn't feeling well. And it, it just gave, you know, it kind of gave me googie feelings inside. But it, at the same time, it was him showing his care for her for whatever she was going through so you know just holding hands sitting next to each other cuddling you know even when you're watching a movie you know spending that having that romantic you time together is so important mm -hmm. when the kids are going are off to sleep at night usually we have a curfew here so by you know eight o'clock when the kids are sleeping then you also have mommy and daddy time to get this gives you all opportunity to talk to each other see how each other's day was see how each other are, are feeling and etc. So I think that, you know, just being a little bit more physical is important to be able to show your um, emotional side um, in a nonverbal form. That's very great. 
God bless you. First Lady Dora, if you want to look at it as well. And, um, First Lady Henrietta said, um, just showing affection. I believe that for, for, for me, for some of us who are extroverts, we have no problem speaking up. You know, <laughs> if you're doing something that I, it's not, you know, how I like it, I will speak up because when it comes to men, they, they easily get pleasure in so many ways and it's so easy for them. Women are different. And so if you're a woman, you need to learn to speak up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they will never pick up on the nonverbal clues. It doesn't matter what you, how you do it, they will, they will not pick up on it. So open your mouth and say it, honey, I want you to hold me this way. You know, this is how I, I feel affection. And if they're not doing it, lead by example, do it to them. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you want him to hold you when you're in public or even when you're home watching TV, when he's sitting there watching TV and he has his phone and playing with it, go take the phone away from him and then and hold his hands, play with his hands, you know, just play with him. And by doing that, you teach him how he should do it. Thank and you. <laughs> Mom said they don't want the singlets and the socks anymore. <laughs> we, we cannot read your minds. As much as we pick up on the non verbals, we assume that. I know it's not good to always assume, but if you will not speak up, you mm -hmm. keep getting towels and singlets and socks. <laughs> we will encourage you that this time around, you should always speak up. Tell your wife, um, tell her that, honey, I've ha I have enough socks. Mm -hmm. This time around, do something else. Mm -hmm. I want you to get me a shirt mm -hmm. or I just want you to be creative and do something else. So if you don't speak up, you always get whatever the person feels is mm -hmm. good for you. And mm -hmm. in being romantic, it doesn't come very easy for our, most of our men, mm -hmm. you know, because of our, our culture, because of our background. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they are shy about it. And it, it's okay, it's your wife. You know, I, I, I don't know, I don't understand why. We should not overdo things, but God has given you that beautiful woman. And as time is going on every day, it will get to a point where we cannot do anything anymore. You become like a sister and a brother. Yeah. So, so this is a time that we need to enjoy each other, enjoy our marriages, enjoy our families. And like uh, I, I, so me and Rihanna said, set a time for the kids, you know, that they will be, they, will, they can go to bed. If you come to my home, it's, I mean, we, we kiss everywhere, all, all the time. Yes, and the couple's like, ew, ew. I'm like, that's my husband. <laughs> that's my husband. And we tell them, the mm -hmm. only thing you can do this is when you are married. Mm -hmm. And we tell them, because we want them to know that affection is just not in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. You can show affection everywhere. And they should not expect any less from their husbands or their wives in future. Mm -hmm. So we are setting the example. So I, I, I feel that, is good to speak up and also we should lead by example. Thank you so much. You know, and it's true. This the kids are soaking ew, ew. It's like, no, <laughs> it's ew to you, but this is honeycomb for mommy. You know, sometimes we joke about stuff like that, but it's so we will prepare their minds, you know, and stuff like that. And I see some people commenting. So I want to just uh, quickly acknowledge the people who have joined us. And, you know, as you even said that, if people don't speak up, you can tell your, your spouse as uh, Father's Day is coming, what it is. And we women are very good before father's day we say this is what i want this is what i want so and if they will and i like what you said if they won't do it let's do it to them so we can actually approach them and ask them what do you want for this father's day so i see big sister benedicta has uh, shown the menu plan of uh teaser aprepensa banku okra stew <laughs> so this time it's no longer shirt this is what she's gonna serve thank you all and then also we have um I uh, need to acknowledge also uh, we have covenanted Becky, uh, Destiny Becky is with us, God bless you. Ignis Fidelia and Nina J is with us, God bless you too. And then so women should initiate that. Our husbands are not our boyfriends, so we should enjoy. And then what good one, Mama Dora, if they are not doing it, do it to them. Thank you. And somebody said we should get what they like, not what we like. Patricia Love said that's what. And then my husband says, thanks, First Lady Dora, you have hit the nail right on the head. And somebody mm -hmm. said in the kitchen. Mama daughter, 
and you, as you say, you do it everywhere. So I think people are loving that. I'm going to come to you, Mama Debbie, Mama <laughs> Margaret. Is there something you want to weigh in, even from the mature perspective, how we can initiate romance, even as we communicate love to one another and emotional intimacy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was told by um, my husband that, you know, this is it. It's just you and me for life. So we may as well enjoy each other as much as we can. There's nobody else anywhere, mm -hmm. you know? So we got to learn, for me, one of the things is to learn to relax in the relationship. It's very, very important. Learn to relax. When you are relaxed, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that is where your emotions come out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you're not relaxed, you, you are a little stiff in mm -hmm. so many things. So you, you, you are even sometimes afraid to show your true feelings. But when you are relaxed, you know that, hey, this is my best. Mm. So I give my best. At, like today is the last day. I learned that lesson from, I, I used to work in a hospital and you found some of the people come in, they are very sick, they are dying. And I made up my mind that, wow, you know, we don't have tomorrow. Mm. So today is the best day of all. Let's give it all in for today. That's and right. when we have that mentality, love, love him, love her, show you care, pamper him, pamper her, you know, be open with each other, you know, make each other laugh. Uh, those kind of things. When you do that, you go to bed at night knowing that God is looking on you and he's very happy mm -hmm. because marriage came from him, right? And yes. he wants us to enjoy each other. So let us enjoy each other, old as we are, mm -hmm. uh, for, his, for his name's sake. And when we do, we have the peace of mind. We'll grow healthy and then we'll grow by his mercies. Our children will see and they'll also follow in the roots. And then there will be a whole generation of loving and caring people out in the world. Amen. God bless you, mommy. I like what you said. We learn to relax and not be stiff. And, yeah. you know, there, there's this um, joke that somebody, you know, was saying, it says in our local language, Go on and your chaddy is like relax <laughs> <That's it. laughs> and enjoy the gifts that are surrounding you. So I think I like what you said. I'm taking that with me. God bless you. Mm -hmm. Oh my grateful for it. Okay. I think showing affection should not only be for Father's Day or Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. it should be a lifetime. Mm -hmm. 24-7. After all, we live together and we live together till thy kingdom come. Mm -hmm. Another way to show affection is also learn from your mistakes. Mm, mm. A lot from your mistakes. We are human beings. We, are, we offend each other here and there. Learn from them and then learn to forgive and forget. That's one of the most important aspects. Forgiving and forgetting is very important. And then do your corrections. You see, when you offend or there is any mistake or anything, learn to do the correction or correct a very lovely way. You see, I hope means you will offend him. She, he will also offend you. So do your corrections, correct each other in a very mutual and very friendly way. And then come also with positive surprises, ideas, most of the time. Mm -hmm. You have never done before. It shouldn't be the same thing over and over again. Try to come out with new ideas, new things that was surprising, that was surprising. And then also give the, your husband the opportunity to be the head and the leader of the house. Don't do over uh, controlling. Don't take things into your hands. Learn to let him have his way in the house, mm -hmm. the priority. Make mm -hmm. the boss, the king in the house, the leader, the priest, the ruler in the house. Allow him. You see, when you allow him to, to have his way and be the head, I tell you, you'd be surprised what he, he will do for you. you see? Mm -hmm. And if you know how to, how to handle them or how to play your cards well as a lady, okay. you never have a problem with your husband. Mm -hmm. If you don't know how to handle them, if you don't know how to deal with them, it becomes a huge thing. Mm -hmm. And then thing, learn also to be at peace with your in-laws. Mm -hmm. I think that I want to tell people. If mm -hmm. you have one to love you, to, to be good, to learn to, to be what to be respectful to their parents as well as their, their sisters and their brothers. Because you don't learn to do all these things. I tell you, no matter what, there's always conflict in the house. 
So this is what I want to leave with our hearers today. Show affection every day. Don't wait until Father's Day or Mother's Day. Let it be a lifestyle. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. You said do different things. And first lady Angela Moses said, do things you've never done before. And big sister Benedicta Brookman J says, your emotions come out when you learn to relax a good one and then learn to relax in the marriage. So people like that. And this is Sandra was to say, God bless you, all women of God. You've done justice to this important topic. And my husband says, relax and don't be stiff. <laughs> so I think that's what he likes. And, you know, it's very good. We've had a very great discussion. Our time is fast spent. And, you know, this is a conversation to be continued. So we're going to, at this point, you know, begin to take closing remarks. And I want to do this uh, scripture as we close. Hebrews chapter 1, 1 to 3. I'm looking at it from the ears. It says, long ago, and many times, and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. Verse three, he is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he opposed the universe by the word of his power. After making purifications for sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. And I'm emphasizing he spoke in many times, many ways, and he has spoken by his son and he has spoken by the word of his power power god is speaking even as we're about to close first lady dora if you give a give us your closing remarks and some mommy Henrietta, and then we'll come to our mothers debbie and mama margaret okay so what i want to say is that god is a great communicator mm. and just as we have learned today uh we have various forms of communication uh, we have the verbals the non-verbals the written the visuals and if God who created us spoke in various ways, in diverse ways, it tells you and I that communication is not just one way. Mm. It should not be limited to a particular style. Mm. Um, the Bible is, is a way of communicating. Mm. You know, Paul wrote letters to Timothy. Mm. That, is, that is a written form of communication. You know, God spoke through our father, spoke through Jesus. He's still speaking to us. So that tells us that mama says, relax. And understand that there are so many ways you can communicate to a person. Mm -hmm. You know, look at the verbals, look at the non-verbals, um, look at the, the written words, uh, mm -hmm. use visuals. So we should have all our senses be alert and understand that if we are learning from our maker who, who spoke to us, who dealt with us in various uh, ways, then that should tell you and that we should be flexible in the way we communicate and we should try and as much as possible to let our communication be meaningful meaningful and the person receiving it to be able to un understand it as well. God bless you. Talking about the visual, talking about the written, and even as Mama Margaret gave us the example where Apostle will always call to check in. You know, throughout the day, you can take a minute to say, honey, I miss you. Honey, I love you. Or mm -hmm. how is your day going? And the visuals, the ladies hit Victoria's Secret. And, you know, let the visuals speak. So this is a good way to communicate. Thank you so much. God bless you. First Lady Henrietta Christine. Yes, I just wanted to add that, you know, communication is a very vital part in um, our relationship in a marriage. And with that being said, we have to understand that even though some things may be communicated in a way, it may not been, have been received mm -hmm. in that way. We have to be able to learn to agree to disagree on certain issues, but we have to be able to maintain a healthy form or a healthy route of communication between spouses, between husbands, and between wives. Without communication, there's no way that the marriage would be able to stand um, because communication not only allows you to exchange information, but it also allows you to express yourself, express your emotions, express how you're feeling, express your, even your plans moving forward. And so we have to um, 
uh, for those of, you know, those people who don't have spouses who are very verbal or who don't like to express themselves, we have to kind of, you know, help them to be able to express themselves in a healthy way so that communication can be keen in a, a marriage and in a relationship and that the blessings and the unity, the trust that is established with this communication can be maintained in a household. So may God bless you all for listening. I've been so blessed today. Um, and um, that's just a little tidbit that I wanted to add. God bless you so much. And I'm going to come to Mama Debbie and Mama Margaret. Now, I want to read the scripture as you give us your closing. Second Samuel 16. As the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, this is from the NIV, Mikhail, daughter of Saul, washed from the window. When she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. And verse 17 said, they brought the ark of the Lord and set in the place in the tent. And David had paid, and David sacrificed offerings. Mama Derby, even as you're giving us your closing remarks, I want us to look at the non-verbals. She never spoke a word, but the Bible is specific about what was happening in her heart. Even as you're giving us your closing remarks, looking at this particular scripture, what should we learn in addition to what you want to close with us? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I'm so blessed today. It has been a marvelous time and I've learned so much. Yeah, um, in my closing remarks, I see that our Father God, is a main example we need to follow when it comes to communication. Uh, he did it with love. Yeah. Even when we sinned, it did not come down hard. He did it with empathy. Yeah. He did it with gentleness. Yeah. He did it with understanding. And um, we as his children, he did it with confidence. You know, we as spouses, as we relate to each other, we have to remember these qualities and then be able to actually show forth that when we are dealing with somebody else, we don't know where they've been, where they are coming from, but as we open up, we do it in a friendly way and we look at the people. When you are actually talking to somebody and you've got your eyes to the side, immediately you are like the non verbal you are telling the person they are not important. And when they see that, immediately, immediately inside, you see the emotions start to change. Mm. And, uh, and with Michael, what she did, we have to be careful. Sometimes we may not say certain things, but we, we may be offended with our spouse. And deep down in our hearts, we insult them. And when, when you do, God who knows and sees everything will actually see what we are doing. And you see, because she had anger in her heart against her husband, when she went to him, her tone of voice also came out with that anger. Sometimes people may misinterpret what we are saying, but sometimes our actions may also allow people to see what we don't see. Mm. And so in so doing, we have to be very careful how we balance those things so that in our environments, we make sure that peace will reign no matter what. God bless Thank you. you. And God, God bless you, you so much. Thank yeah. you so much, Mommy. God bless you so yeah. much. Mama Margaret, even as you close them with us, and I'll right. um, read something as you close. Remember, Michael Anansi says, talking is not necessarily communication. There is a major difference in talking as someone and talking to someone. And it starts with learning to harness your emotions. Your emotions can be real, but unrealistic. So God bless you, man of God. And then I have somebody say that we're going to surprise senior. She says, we're going to, it's about time we move to the next level. We are going to surprise you all this Father's Day. And um, Elder Kwame Ketia says, thanks women of God for blessing us today. Thanks to the mommy could see. That is all most men need, affection from their wives. So hey, he's giving you A plus. Richard Campbell is with us. God bless you. And all of you who are with us, God bless you. And so Mama Margaret will take your course on that. Okay, just to end up, I want to say that communication is very important. Everywhere, wherever you go, you cannot stop talking. So it is very appropriate for us to learn the right way of talking. No one person is, knows all that we need to learn, especially from the word of God. Mm -hmm. It's the best manual. If we want to learn how to talk, we have to go to the Bible. The Bible says in Psalm 49, verse 3, my mouth will speak words of wisdom. Mm -hmm. And from my heart will give understanding. 
mm-hmm. wisdom in our everyday language, the words we use can be very destructive or can build. Mm-hmm. We are not very careful. We can do a lot of damage with the words that we use. Mm-hmm. Especially a time for such a time like us in our homes, around outside community, the church, wherever we are, be mindful of the words you use. They are very important. Sometimes you don't even need to open your mouth, but somebody can just look at you. Even your outward appearance, your dressing, can mm. speak more than enough. Mm. You need to learn all these things. It is very appropriate for us to know, learn. And then one thing also I want to learn to forgive. Forgiveness is everything. Learn to have mercy and learn to forgive. Because if the Lord had not forgiven us, we don't know where we would have been at this time. So learn to forgive one another. Learn to let things go. Learn to move on in life. Learn new things and learn to enjoy one another. When we go to heaven, there is no marriage over there. The only place we can marry is on earth here. So make sure you make the good use of your marriage on earth. So that when you go to heaven, there is no marriage. And the Bible says, if you don't marry well on earth, your heaven going to be a problem. Mm-hmm. You're not doing anything anyhow as believers. But the, 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 the ultimate goal is to get to heaven. Mm-hmm. Don't let your marriage stop you from going to heaven. Because of all these little things. So I believe that today's message is going to help us a lot. We have all benefited. May the Lord bless his word. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. Even as we're about to get ready for Mama Debbie uh, to give us a prayer, you know, want to say thank you all so much for, you know, what you you said. Mama Margaret, as you were speaking uh, about forgiveness, forgiveness keeps coming. And, you know, in this season, we are dealing with the pandemic. It's a, it's, it's, on, on uh, something that it's unimaginable how it is to be able to live in a home where there's no forgiveness and you look at what we reference in genesis chapter three even after everything the man uh, even though he blamed the wife the wife blamed the serpent yet still managed to live together so god bless you for giving us that and i like what shakespeare you know <laughs> i i did literature in school and we had to use shakespeare so i i was in a while go back to him but he said something he said there are no arts to find the mind's construction in the face he's just trying to say don't assume you for you that communicates speak up so that mm-hmm. your message will be relevant and understood and you the listener Don't be too quick to assume. We speak, we clarify, and we give feedback. But as Christians, we have been given that powerful weapon. So we acknowledge all of you who are with us. Bishop Kenyatta and Nijim Mensa of Action Church. Daddy, I salute you. That's my best friend's father. And as a young girl, he... He, he really impacted my life, a, a great father figure, even as we are looking at Father's Day. And I remember the first time I spent the weekend with them, I was able to say, this is a man of God. And if I ever married, I want my husband to be like, I've never told him, but there's just, just being in their home and seeing how he was, I just, it, it was an inspiration for me. And I thank God that even as we are talking about Father's Day, Bishop Kenneth is here to see that he's made an impact in me and it, it shaped my choice of a husband and I want God to bless him for that. And so Apostle Yadam, God bless you, Daddy, Apostle Fori, God bless you, Mama Patient also from Canada, God bless you and all of you, we thank God for your life. Elder Sam Esahio at the studio, salute, salute to you. Mama Debbie, if you can pray with us, please. Shall we pray? Father, we come unto you once again as we give you thanks, praise, and glory. We bless you for this learning experience in your presence, reminding us that communication is very important because you instituted it. And you have taught us this afternoon that the way you deal with us with respect, with compassion, with love, even when we have sinned, You do not condemn, but you talk to us. Mm -hmm. 
You reason with us. You said we should come unto you, even though our sins are like scarlet. You said we should come so we can reason together and that they shall be white as snow. Lord, may you help us as couples. May you help us so that we will understand that this is a bond, a union from on high. And as such, any help, any direction, any guidance we need to be able to make this union, a union that will bring glory and honor unto you. Lord, may you guide us and may you grant us grace by the power of your spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, may we make a difference, oh Lord, in our community communications so that it will affect our families so that it will affect our environment so that it will affect our churches so that it will affect our schools so that everywhere we go people will see indeed that we are one you said when we are one there is nothing that we cannot do may you help us to be one May we learn to forgive one another. May we learn to understand one another. May we learn to respect one another. Or oh, may we learn to pay attention to one another in verbal and nonverbal ways. May we communicate with clarity so that understanding, oh Lord, Father, oh, will be, things will be understood and there will be peace in our homes, in our families, in our environments, and in our lives. We bless you so much. Oh, we thank you, oh Lord, Father, for everything you have done. We bless you, oh Lord, for Mama Gitti. We are praying that may you continue to bless her, oh Lord, more and more, so that the next time we meet once again, we will have a fruitful time in your presence. May your name alone be praised. As we thank you for every one on the panel. Be magnified, O oh Lord, and everyone who heard us. Thank you. In Jesus, your mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all so much. And so we'll meet you again, God willing, on Monday. It is a happy Father's Day, especially to all our fathers, to our national head, to all our apostles, to all our dear husbands. We love you. We've heard you. No more socks. Be prepared for something special this Father's Day. Thank you so much, First Lady Dora Berry J, First Lady Henrietta Kusi, Mama Debbie Engman, Mama Margaret Ofori. God bless you all. And all of you. Please share, please love us. Thank you, and we'll see you again, God willing, on Monday. Bye. Bye. God bless you. God bless you. Bless you.